Hi, my name is Julian Quinton. I'm the founder and CEO at Routine. Let me tell you a story. The story of a tool that started very, very small, yet grew a giant. A tool that most of you in the room are using every day for managing the collaboration of your team. I am talking about Notion. Notion started in 2013, but not as the tool that you know today, but as a rather simple, collaborative note editor, basically competing against Evernote. But as the tool grew in pop popularity, a lot of people, individual and businesses, wanted to put everything in it. And what's, that's when the founders of Notion found a major issue. Data silos. Any team is using many services, GitHub, Salesforce, HubSpot, Figma. And whenever they do so, data gets generated in those tools. And that data is locked in, which means that it's quite difficult to get it out connect it, enrich it, leverage it, visualize it the way you want. And so Notion set out to actually fix that problem to break free of data silos. This is a slide from their pitch deck of their Series C round. Now, you might think that this is quite unique to the amazing story of Notion and their success. But you would be wrong, because many other companies saw the exact same pattern. Asana started as a collaborative task management tool. Coda brought uh, spreadsheets into documents. Airtable started with databases. But all of them saw the same thing. All of their users wanted to put more data because they loved the tool. Now, I call this market work operating system because those tools have become the central piece of the organization of your teams. Now, interestingly, and for the oldest in the room, in the 90s, that market was basically called ERP for Enterprise Resource Planning, one tool for doing everything, basically. But then how did Notion, ClickUp, Monday, Airtable actually solve the data problem, the data silo problem? Why well, you might be actually disappointed because it didn't turn out the way you would expect. Instead of connecting to all the other services and allowing you to freely move the data and connect it and visualize it, what all of those services did was consolidating. What I mean is that by developing key features and acquiring other companies, they expanded their surface area to support more use cases and more markets. In other words, instead of working with other tools, they replaced those tools. That's how Notion launched email, calendar, forms, and ClickUp just launched a chat to compete against Slack. But can we expect Notion to also launch an alternative for GitHub, Salesforce, Figma, HubSpot? I would say probably not, in which case we still have a data silo problem on our hands. So I know that. Everybody loves Notion, or many people love Notion. So I can feel the skepticism in the room. So let me take an example. I've got my marketing team using Asana. They love it. And obviously, my engineers are using GitHub. And I, am, I have a ticketing system in Notion, which I like. But I would like to enhance it with data coming from Asana and other data coming from GitHub so that I've got a better ticketing system. So this is my basic ticketing system. And now I want to connect GitHub and Asana. I took those because Notion has connections with those. So I don't know if you know, but you can do slash GitHub in Notion. And you can actually bring data from a repository. So I'm going to select issues. And it's going to start populating data in Notion. Fine, that's great. I actually brought data from GitHub to Notion. But then I've got two problems here. The first problem is that this data is read-only. It's not bidirectionally synchronized, which is not great, but I guess we can live with this. But the second problem is far more fundamental. The data coming from GitHub has been placed in a database in Notion, a database which is dedicated to GitHub. You might not see the problem here, but let's say that now I'm connecting Asana. The data from Asana is going to be placed in a database dedicated to Asana, which means that if I connect Salesforce and HubSpot, I'm going to have two more databases. Maybe you don't see the problem. But basically, before I did this, 
I had data silos in the form of services, so I needed to switch between going to GitHub, Salesforce, and Asana. Now, in Notion, I have data silos in the form of databases. I need to switch between my main ticketing system, main, ticket, main, main tickets database, then switch to the GitHub specific database, then switch to the Asana specific database, and so on and so forth. That's not what we want. So let me introduce you to Routine, which is a next generation data centric work operating system. Routine has the specificity of relying on multiplexing. I know it sounds very complicated, but bear with me. Basically, the way Routine works is as follows. First, you're going to define your data model, which is exactly the same thing as creating databases in Airtable or in Notion. We call those types, but it's the same thing. So we have a type for people, for companies, and another type for tickets. Then you're going to connect services, Intercom, GitHub, Salesforce. And whenever you do so, you are going to pick the synchronization model. Is it one way or bidirectional? But then, and that's the most important part, you are going to map the data from those external sources onto your data model. For instance, Intercom has multiple entities. You have companies, you have contacts, you have conversations, and you have tickets. Maybe what's interesting here is the tickets. So you are going to map the tickets onto a type in routine, the ticket type in this example. But then you're going to repeat the process, let's say, with GitHub. And you're going to say, all the issues from GitHub, I want to manipulate them in routine as a ticket. And that's the multiplexing. And you can do the same with Salesforce, so that all the tasks that are created by your salespeople, you can manipulate those as a ticket in routine. Do you see the difference? Is that now in routine, you have a single type of entity, which is tickets, that you can manipulate, connect, and reach, visualize, even though the data come from multiple sources. So let me do a quick demo of what it looks like in routine. So first, you define your types. So in here, I'm going to define a task type. And then I'm going to connect Notion and Gmail, for instance. So I'm going to pick data from a Notion database and map it onto my task type. Likewise, the email that are stored in Gmail, I'm going to map them onto the task type in routine. From that point on, everything is a task. Doesn't matter to routine. Which means that every functionality which is related to task I can benefit from those no matter if the data is created directly in routine or comes from Notion or comes from Gmail. For instance, I can plan a task like the first one that was coming from Gmail here. I can plan it to tomorrow, for instance. Or even better, I could take a task that's coming from Notion and I can drag it and drop it, uh, drop it onto my calendar because that's a functionality that Routine supports. It supports it for any task, no matter where it comes from. So the benefits are twofold. On one side, for engineers, salespeople, support people, marketing people, they can keep using the tool that they love. They don't have to manually go to Notion to recreate data that already lives in their tool. They create data in GitHub and in Salesforce. That's the product they use every day and automatically uh, under the hood, everything is synchronized to routine. But even more importantly, for managers and executives, they finally have a 360 overview of what is happening across services which means that they can better track, they can better plan, they can take better decisions for their teams. Routine will launch early next year. If you want to get your hands on it first, please subscribe at routine.co.slash and we will let you know when it's ready. Thank you very much.